Well, I think we, we come to the table with financial baggage if we've grown up in a family system, which we all have. And so everybody comes into a family with their own definition of financial wellness. And um, then we're met with another person and we have to make sure that that definition is the same. And a lot of times... Um, a husband and a wife will not have the same definition of financial wellness. So one person might be a saver and the other one's a spender. And what begins to happen is it begins to create a divide within the marriage. Mental health challenges are often kept in the closet or even swept under the rug. We know they can affect anyone from adults to children and the struggle is real. Join us as we talk about relevant topics with mental health experts. Welcome to Equip Online, a place for hope and help. Well, welcome to Equip Online. I'm Wally. This is my co-host, Brian. And today we're going to be looking at a topic that is fascinating. It affects all of us, uh, how financial stress affects our marriage. And so we brought Cheryl Butler in as our guest expert today. And so, Brian, if you could tell us a little bit about Cheryl. Absolutely. So, uh, Cheryl, you probably wouldn't necessarily claim to be a financial expert just to uh, uh, qualify I, that. I know some people in my life that would <laughs> laugh at that, but. Um, but uh, Cheryl is a licensed professional counselor mm-hmm. um, and she runs her own practice, uh, True North, mm-hmm. uh, right in the Woodlands area yeah. here. Um, and uh, she's passionate about helping individuals, mm-hmm. couples, families um, find not only balance to the everyday demands, but I love you have a passion for them finding joy Mm -hmm. while they're doing it. Joy is a really important word for you. Yeah. Um, You know, and she's had a lot of different uh, education and training uh, for her counseling. Um, And I know that you also love working with families who are going through transitions, Mm -hmm. whether that's um, a divorce, uh, merging families, um, parenting, marriage, a lot of those kind of areas. And so, and just helping people with that are struggling with things like self-esteem and confidence, yeah. uh, learning communication techniques, uh, interpersonal relationships. So, uh, very, very important work that you, uh, Thank are you. passionate about and love to be mm-hmm. a part of anything else, Cheryl, 60 seconds. Uh, what's, uh, something else that we could learn about you? What do you, uh, you know, I live, <laughs> I live in a house full of boys, so I've got three boys at home and, um, so when I'm not at work, I just love being at home with my family. Um, we recently bought a sailboat, so we're all learning how to sail. So wow. I don't know. They Speaking of finances, they say, like, when you buy a boat, you've lost all your money or something like that. I don't know. There's some yeah. quote about it. But, That's yeah, awesome. it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And this yeah. is such a great topic um, and so important right now in the culture of what we're all experiencing. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, yeah, speaking of the topic, uh, so Wally, what are we uh, talking about today? Yeah, so today we're talking about finances, and it's a subject that in good times and in bad is always a subject that can raise strife in our marriages, and so um, it brings pressure to the marriage, and so I'm excited, Cheryl, for you to be able to talk to us today about uh, how do we navigate that pressure, how do we work through that in a way that's healthy, uh, so that whatever situation we might find ourselves in, it doesn't add uh, more weight to yeah. an already weighty topic that's, mm-hmm. that's, that's weighing us down. So um, looking forward to that, talking about confidence. How do we find that? How do we find uh, uh, trust in one another, communication techniques, all mm-hmm. of that? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd love to just kind of throw a question your way, Cheryl, to get the conversation yeah. going. So, <laughs> you know, the, the first thing I thought about is, you know, even in your counseling practice, um, how often do you run across uh, financial uh, stresses as kind of what brings people in. How often do you encounter this in the counseling world? Mm-hmm. Such a great question. And, you know, it, it doesn't usually begin as the initial, what we call as the intake call. I don't know that I've ever had someone call in and say, I'd like to schedule an appointment because of financial issue. Um, but what we uncover is that once we get in, we might be talking about communication patterns or trust issues, and then about two layers deep, then finances almost always come into play. Um, So we work through a lot of the things that involve financial discussions, such as communication, um, trust, um, openness, honesty, and then as we'll talk later, how do we cope when we are in a financial stressful situation? So. Yeah. A hundred percent of the time yeah. is the answer. Just a matter about when you're going to get to when, it. When, right? yes. Yeah, yeah, interesting. Mm-hmm. So, you know, just um, 
my experience is is that people really struggle uh, with this whole concept. I mean, there's whole ministries like Dave Ramsey has Mm -hmm. on finances, and some people gravitate towards that. Some uh, push back from that. But why is, um, I've heard it said that the majority of divorces, I don't know if I think that's true or not, but the majority of divorces, finance is the number one cause. I don't know if that's true, but it, it is true that it has a tremendous weight on us uh, emotionally, on our emotional health. Why is it? I mean, what is it about finances mm-hmm. that weighs us down so so much? Well, I think we, we come to the table with financial baggage if we've grown up in a family system, which we all have. And so everybody comes into a family with their own definition of financial wellness. And um, then we're met with another person and we have to make sure that that definition is the same. And a lot of times um, a husband and a wife will not have the same definition of financial wellness. So one person might be a saver and the other one's a spender. And what begins to happen is it begins to create a divide within the marriage. And so... um, and finances historically was not something that people talked about in public. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, I was raised in a home where you didn't talk about politics, religion, mm-hmm. or finances. And I think that's generationally shifted a little bit, but it people feel really alone. And if somebody is struggling with contentment or comparison, then it's not something that someone, someone is going to want to talk about in public amongst their peers. They want the perception that they have it all together. Nobody wants to confess that they're struggling, especially with something that we have to do every day, which is utilize money. So, and I think it's probably too that guys and women look at it so differently. I mean, you know, um, I know my wife likes to have the house looking nice, and mm-hmm. you know, uh, that's kind of um, she worked as a school teacher, but um, it's always been that's like the place that she recognized that she wanted to do well in and what the house look like. Um, whereas the guy tends to be more, um, uh, it's a measuring tool that, um, you know, somehow if I drive a Lamborghini, I better than dr- I am, uh, driving a Toyota Corolla, mm-hmm. you know, first car that I ever bought. So, um, <laughs> The, the Lamborghini? Not the- no. <laughs> okay. The, the, the not, not in this yeah. life, lifetime. Yeah. Wow. The Corolla. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, you're right, and and I think we attach, and particularly to some of the communities that the community we live around too probably has an extra set of maybe pressures we feel with the comparison of like mm-hmm. who our friends we run with, you know, who we're around, and their standard of living. We feel this need to, in order to feel accepted and valued in that community, we have to somehow make it work where we have similar cars, similar lifestyle to try mm-hmm. to feel like we got to fit in and be accepted. Mm-hmm. So I feel like there are so many, there are those kind of pressures we feel the finances. Yeah. You know, finances and time, there it's a resource that we can measure, but we tend to have our measurement stick a little bit off. And so we measure it mm-hmm. by what we see. Yeah. I've often thought it would be very interesting if we all walked around with our income to debt ratio, you know, on our <laughs> shirts, because I think it would really mm-hmm. highlight that it's um, what we're seeing is not necessarily a measure of mm-hmm. financial wellness. And it's causing people a lot of stress because they're having to live up to something, a a perception that they've created. And it's a humbling experience to be in a counseling office with someone when the perception is that everything is well, but it's not. Yeah. So. Uh, So we're bringing two different pressures almost into play around the same subject. One is our background, whether we grew up in a spending or a Mm -hmm. saving home. Mm -hmm. But then secondly is is even that tendency, uh, not to be stereotypical, but how guys view finances versus how women view finances. So mm-hmm. we've got all these things coming into play. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You know, uh, so Cheryl, I'm curious, um, again, as you counsel people and run across different stories, what, are, what do you see, what are some of the negative ways that people tend to cope with uh, financial challenges? And then maybe on the flip side, you know, what are, what are some of the, the more positive ways to cope when sure. you find yourself in a financial stress? Yeah, and I think we, we will all cope one way or the other. And so some ne- very big negative ways that people tend to cope is avoidance. Um, they, they see the bill and they just don't open the email. They don't open the letter. They, they hide it, which is, is brought by shame 
and embarrassment and secrecy then. So I think those would be the biggest ones. People are secretive um, and they avoid. Um, the healthy coping mechanisms, especially within a, a couple and a family relationship, is to put the problem in front of them instead of between them, um, just to take a more collaborative problem-solving approach, um, to bring awareness and highlight maybe any debt that there is or outstanding bills, and it really removes the shame. Um, I know my husband and I, when we were working towards being financially well, we had a big dry erase board that we literally wrote down our bills and we stack ranked them in the order of which we wanted to pay them off. And it was, I mean, it was a big dry erase board, but it was beautiful because, because we could see it. Um, there was no shame around it. We didn't have to feel embarrassed or nervous or keep secrets. We could tackle it head on. And it took time. It did not happen overnight. Yeah. I love, you know, I think even as a, uh, from the Christian perspective, um, I, I've noticed in my own life that, um, you know, I believe that there, we walk, that there's a spiritual domain. Um, and the, uh, the devil likes to keep us living in shame and secrecy and in the dark. Mm -hmm. And when we, when we kind of live in that place, it just continues to gain more power and we just really get pulled down into the pit. But I, I've really uh, come to learn that if I will bring something to the light, which is so hard at first, it's just, so hard. you know, that light comes on. I mean, even I think the image of a light coming on at first, like, oh, man, this is mm -hmm. got to just honestly kind of own up to this and bring it out. But we kind of then take away the devil's power mm -hmm. at that point to keep us just beat down in shame and guilt and, and you're worthless and all these kind of lies that come yeah. to us. And, you know, I think it's so true what you're saying. We, you get it on that whiteboard and all right, let's just at least put it out there and here's mm -hmm. what we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. You know, there's just, it's such a, that's a great first step mm -hmm. is to take, all right, here, here's what it is. Mm -hmm. There's, we're not going to hide from it and be ashamed mm -hmm. of it. So it's very powerful. So Cheryl, as, as we look at this, I know that your passion is to help people find joy, mm -hmm. um, especially you know in their marriage. And today we're looking at uh, how finances uh, impact that. Mm -hmm. I'm wondering, uh, you talked about putting that out there mm -hmm. in, in front uh, that y'all could address those debt. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a tool that, you, that people can use to address really kind of where they are and that they can... Uh, instead of being coming at it from a different perspective, how do the two of us work together mm -hmm. to reach this end? And so um, I'm wondering what tools that would be available out there that you see people use. I know for my wife and I, one of the things that we do is um, her mom told her early on, and I don't know that this was necessarily healthy because uh, finances came into my world as a result of this, but <laughs> had said, whatever you do, don't ever own the checkbook. You'll never get away from it. And so, guess who owns the checkbook? Well, it's okay because um, I love numbers. I have a, a love-hate affair with finances, I guess, and that I love knowing where we are in the financial picture and everything. But one of the things as I've gotten older, it occurs to me is, is that um, I need uh, to show my wife respect. I need to let her know where we are and everything so that if something did happen to me, she would know exactly where everything is, uh, where we are financially, where the passwords to the different accounts are, even to the way that we pay uh, our, our bills. And so as we do that monthly, we'll sit down and take a look at that. Okay, here's where we are. Here's what's changed from last month, if anything, um, hopefully towards the positive. But I found that uh, instead of, because us having the mentality of one's a spender, one's a saver, uh, I think we kind of both gravitate more towards spending. It allows us to bring some discipline without an adversarial relationship. Mm -hmm. and so that's been very helpful for yeah. us. I wonder, you know, as you counsel with couples, what, what are some things that people could do out there that would really bring them together as a team uh, mm -hmm. and finding oneness uh, in, in this area of finances. Mm -hmm. Well, and I, you know, I think the, the beginning part is to understand that 
um, when somebody is feeling shame, they're going to be defensive. Mm -hmm. And so when we start by putting it out there and making it an approach where a couple is taking it and they're going to tackle their finances together, then it helps to mitigate the shame a little bit. But some of that has to lie in the way we talk to each other and the way we converse with each other and the words we use. We don't ever want it to become a parenting relationship where there's one person who is you know, giving an allowance or, um, I mean, we recommend in our office that we just don't use that word because it has such deeper meaning of from childhood. And then it it breaks down intimacy within a relationship because that's what we're looking at is how, how are financial stressors, which we will all have impacting relationships, marriages. And so we want to make sure that when one person, maybe one person is more budget minded than the other, that they're approaching it in a very non-threatening, um, compassionate, friendly way. And that might look like maybe you have to pray about it before you approach your spouse. Um, In our family, we used to do, we like called it burger and budget night because I needed to attach something positive to that experience of budgeting. Because for me, I wasn't looking forward to budget night. I felt like I was going to go sit down and get in trouble. And so we really, and that was, that was my baggage that I was bringing to the table. And so really it's acknowledging that somebody has something that triggers them to need to be defensive. And so it's, we've used, um, you know, weekly meetings to discuss finances. Um, Sometimes my husband will send just a quick email and the email will say, hey, here's, here's the budget for the rest of the month. Love you. And just hearing the end, love you. It just, it, it removes, oh, he's mad at me or you know, what did I buy at Target, that kind of thing. Um, And then sometimes it's just, again, the way we communicate with each other. You know, if if my husband says, what'd you buy at Target? I immediately go into a posture of needing to defend myself as opposed to, hey, when we get a minute, I'd like to talk to you about our budget and let's go over our our monthly spending. Um, Again, feels very compassionate and kind as opposed to a need to defend myself. And I, I, I know I keep saying that word defend, but the minute we get in a defensive posture, it's going to start unraveling and it's not going to end well. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it does even, that part reminds me of even, uh, I know one of the classes we do on a regular basis at Stonebridge is Dave Ramsey's Financial Peace mm-hmm. University. And he talks about, you know, you're going to, you need to, Money is going to come up in a sense. You're going to have kind of a quote unquote money fight one mm-hmm. way or the other. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's better to be proactive with it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and, and I love, I love the idea of the burgers and budget. It's kind of yeah. like, okay, budget is for most people. That's not an exciting, Oh, I look mm-hmm. forward to our budget. No. <laughs> this is going to be awesome. Right. But trying to attach something positive. Yes. We know we need to do this because if we, if we ignore it and we push it aside, mm-hmm. it's going to come up. And now it's and, and if it, it's going to be more of the defensive side mm-hmm. uh, because now we're, we're accusing we're like, hey, you didn't tell me yes. you're spending this. What is this all mm-hmm. about? Those are those unhealthy mm-hmm. uh, marriage discussions. Yes. You want to get on the healthy side. Yeah, so Accusations that. and blame, defensiveness, yeah. those are all that oh, we need to work hard not to do that. And it's difficult because finances make us feel afraid. And when we feel afraid, we respond out of fear. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Now, what do you have here? I'm curious. This is a cool uh, little uh, doodad you have here. Yeah, I borrowed this from my son. (laughs) Yes. Thank you. You know, I think the other thing around finances is it, 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 they are a tool for us. And, um, you know, we know that the Bible teaches us the love of money is the root of all evil, not money. And so when we can create a culture in our home that is healthy surrounding money and financial discussions, it's really important. So in our home, we begin even with our youngest. And this is just a bank. I think I got it from Amazon, but it's from moonjar.com. This is not a paid affiliation, but, um, and it's, we just teach our kids how to save, spend, and give, which are the biblical principles that we want our family to adopt. And, um, you know, they love, they get to pick who they share with and they love the spend part because we don't dictate what they spend on. We don't say, oh, you don't need another matchbox car. It's their money to spend. We give them freedom in that area because they're being disciplined in the other areas. So, yeah. It's yeah. just worked well for us. That's awesome. And uh, I thought it was pretty funny. Cheryl, I think you, you made a deal with uh, your son that if he would let you borrow this to kind of show this illustration, yes. if you lost it at all, you would double his yes, money. Yes, yes. So he, he's he's kind of hoping that maybe yeah, something happens. It will get home. Yes. 
<laughs> yeah, that's, Feels heavy. that's really cool. I love mm-hmm. that idea of even as, I mean, because again, you talk about we all bring in a certain understanding experience with money, mm-hmm. even to marriage. And so, you know, what a great opportunity for us, even as we parent our kids mm-hmm. to help them build a healthy understanding and foundation with mm-hmm. their finances, even when they're little, mm-hmm. they're, they're never too young to get started. Yeah. Right? So I love, I love Thank that. Thank you. You know, there's so many stories out there. Uh, I think of Templeton, who founded the Templeton Funds. He was even knighted Sir Templeton, I, I think, in England, if I'm understanding the story correct. But when he first got married, he uh, they wanted to furnish their apartment. So I think the story goes that he had like $25. So he tasked him, he, himself, his wife, and his friends to go out. Okay, our goal is we've got to furnish this apartment, and all we've got is $25. And so you hear different stories of that, of people in time who have taken uh, an approach, a guideline. And of course, you both have to agree upon that. But it really freed them up to uh, take some of the financial pressure off because learning to live within their means mm-hmm. early on mm-hmm. uh, and setting. So I love that, that you're, yeah. you're teaching that uh, to them early on and even uh, that we can have a surplus. I have a good friend on Crusade staff that every year... Uh, most support, a lot of their support will come in at Christmas time. And what they did one year was they allowed their children to say, how are we going to send this money back out? We're not going to keep any of it, but we're going to let you kids, you know, our friends who are in ministry, y'all are going to decide how we're going to mm-hmm. siphon this money back out. And it wasn't, you know, nickels and dollars. It was yeah. a substantial amount of money. So just that idea of that I can be somebody who's bringing something to the table and be mm-hmm. bringing financial freedom not only to my family but to others. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, how, how do we uh, uh, incorporate that really into our families? That mentality of is that uh, I don't have to spend every penny I make. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, no, I love that. You know, kind of as we begin to wrap up our conversation, Cheryl, um, I know thinking about the environment we're in right now as a country. Um, Maybe there's someone listening right now that either them or maybe a spouse has lost a job. Um, maybe there's someone who has had to take a major pay cut. Um, or maybe there's uh, same salary, but there's all these extra expenses, you know, um, related to just all the changes we're going through. Um, so there could be a lot of people that are just feeling really defeated right now, very discouraged, kind of just, um, they just feel stuck. Mm-hmm. I just would love, you know, what, what is, I always want, you know, our heart behind Equip is to have meaningful conversations that can hopefully help people. And, but, but we want to, we want to give people hope. We want to encourage, mm-hmm. what would, if you could just share a word with someone like that, what, what would come to mind for you? Yeah. You know, we say in our counseling office all the time, you're never stuck. You're never stuck. Um, and then people look at us like, but you're not in my shoes. You don't, you don't know what it feels like. So I would, I would encourage you to um, reach out to someone for help. First of all, be honest about it in your home. Be honest about it with your spouse. Be honest about it with your children. There's a lot of murmurings around. A lot of kids are coming to our office and they feel confused and scared because dad's working more hours or maybe dad's home now and they don't really know what's happening. And so we can speak about finances in a way that's not scary. We can let them know that... Um, Our finances are difficult right now, but we've got this. And so remember, whatever um, environment we model to our children, they will adopt. So um, there are resources out there. I know you'll talk about Mosaics of Mercy, but we also do sliding scale at our office. And if if our office isn't a good fit, there are lots of other places that we can get you plugged in with um, to have the difficult beginning conversations. Maybe we won't walk you through a complete CPA analysis, but we could begin to have those difficult conversations with you. Yeah. Which really helps you get jump started. Mm-hmm. I mean, really sometimes that's the most important thing. Let's just get it, get it out there. Yeah. Let's come together on it and then we can kind of then come up with a plan yeah. uh, from there. Well, um, so really the main thing I'm looking at here is that mm-hmm. I'm taking away from today's conversation is, is that, um, whether we like it or not, mm-hmm. uh, finances are a part of our life. Uh, Some people, there's all different perspectives that we have on it. Some people enjoy uh, conversing about it more than others. But um, the key for us in marriage then is to say, uh, as in all things, how do we have uh, communication, Mm -hmm. uh, communication that is honest and yet supportive uh, so that, and 
dialoguing about it, it takes away what Brian said earlier. I've always heard that what we bring in out of the darkness into the light mm -hmm. loses the stronghold that it has on us. Mm -hmm. And so how do we do that with our finances just to be able to have that conversation, um, you know, and even look forward to the stance that, okay, this is where we are right now, but we're working towards something so that a year, three years, five years, when we're 65, that here's where we are. We're mm -hmm. putting out a game plan there yeah. uh, so that it gives us a goal to move towards together. Mm -hmm. That That's for me yeah, the main thing that, that I'm, yeah. I'm taking away today. So what can I do to yeah. do that? Yeah, no, I think that's so powerful and there's hope in that. Um, and, uh, and that is about really that a lot of times it's the very first step of a journey, which can be the most difficult. It's just mm -hmm. kind of getting the initial momentum going. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think, again, I, again, with Charles and Ellen's story, I think that was a crucial thing for them. And then they they walked together, you know, in a supportive way to get to um, the goal of, of where they were heading. Mm -hmm. um, and so, hey, thank Cheryl. Thank you so much yes. for the conversation. And this has Thanks been such an important me. topic. Yeah. Um, and uh, with all of our guests, if, if somebody wanted to learn more about this topic or wanted to connect with you, Mm -hmm. uh, what would be the best way to do that? So we're online at truenorthtw.com, or you can send an email to info at truenorthtw.com. So or awesome. email Brian and he'll send you my information. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll get you in touch. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. And, you know, uh, so Equip Online is a, um, a partnership between Stonebridge Church and Mosaics of Mercy. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Mosaics of Mercy is a nonprofit uh, here in Montgomery County. Um, and their desire is to be a, uh, mental re, uh, mental health resource hub, mm -hmm. um, where you can get connected to, uh, support groups, counselors, all kinds of great. So they're a really wonderful resource for, mm -hmm. for our area. And, uh, that's a wrap for today. Um, as always, our desire is that you would walk in the fullness of life that you've been created for. God bless you. Hey, thanks so much for watching. We're really passionate about shedding light on mental health. If you found this discussion helpful or beneficial, be sure to like and share the video. If you wanna see more, be sure to subscribe and don't forget to ding that notification bell so you know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next time.